Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we'll move on to our first speaker for this morning. There is a slight change from the agenda, as in to your, those of you who have printed out the agenda. Initially, Mr. S.K. Koh will be speaking first, but he needs to make some arrangements to, for his presentation. So we'll move on to the second speaker first, Mr. Vernon Steinbaker. Now, ladies and gentlemen, on the topic of why certified Scrum Master, personally, I am also a CSM, and I was fortunate to be one of the first batches that will be trained by ATSC and, MN and also continue on with MSC PMP Circle. And personally, I'm also a PMP. So this is one of the organizations that makes sure that even the MCs are fully qualified to be <laughs> the respective talks and sessions. And hopefully all the risk management and mitigation are in place to make sure this session goes along very smoothly. So for the topic of why certified Scrum Master, ladies and gentlemen, through the software industry, we have always known from a traditional sense of the waterfall development methodology, or what you call SDLC. But over time, the demands and needs of customers have definitely evolved. They want it faster, they want results quicker, and definitely they want to see the output of what they have desired and planned for as quick as possible to deliver results. So this gentleman, Mr. Vern Steinbaker, has over 20 years in the IT industry, and he's a very strong advocate of the Agile methodology. For over the last 10 years, he has been not only leading the development of the, as the lead developer, uh, sorry, technology director of the company that is from, but he also has been responsible for training new CSMs, certified CPOs, certified product owners, as well as continue to advocate this practice to all of us. So without much further ado, ladies and gentlemen, let's give Mr. Vernon Steinbaker a rousing applause as he comes to the stage. start. When the technology works, everything is going well. Uh, so uh, welcome to you all. A uh, pleasure for me to be back here in Malaysia. Uh, I got to enjoy some satay yesterday. Uh, yeah, a lot of satay. So uh, every time I come here, I get to enjoy eating. And then I go back and feel sorry that I enjoyed eating as much as I did. Uh, so I'm going to talk to you a little bit today about uh, kind of a scrum where and why. Uh, originally, I think this uh, forum, uh, th this uh, activity today was, was set up kind of uh, to contrast, perhaps even uh, conflict, the idea of PMP versus the idea of Agile and Scrum. Uh, that, that may be fair. I, I think that there are certainly aspects of uh, Scrum that are superior, of course, uh, that I will share with you today. Uh, but that's not to say that PMP doesn't have its uses. Uh, I often joke in Scrum classes that PMP stands for pretty messed up projects. <laughs> and that, that's not entirely true. It uh, kind of depends uh, a little bit on what you're doing. I also joke in the classes that uh, I'm not as old as I look. Uh, I have a lot of white hair. Yeah, a lot of that white hair comes because uh, despite not being a PMP, I did use that traditional waterfall approach uh, to deliver projects for many, many years. Uh, and I delivered a lot of successful projects using that approach. Uh, uh, but each one was a battle. Uh, a lot of scars, yeah, not physical, like on a battlefield, uh, mental scars, uh, and a lot of gray hair through that approach. Uh, so I often uh, tease a little bit during class that uh, the purpose of Scrum is for us to be able to live longer uh, and become more prosperous. Uh, and I think those are good things, and I'm a firm believer that Scrum uh, and the Agile approach uh, is the best way to do that in a wide range of circumstances. Not every circumstance. You know, uh, I'm not going to introduce much about myself. 
If you're interested in learning more about me, Google. Uh, Google is our friend, uh, and I'm quite Googleable. Uh, the one thing that I would highlight, or a couple of things that I would highlight that I think uh, distinguish me a little bit from uh, a lot of people, perhaps. Uh, in America, we have a saying that those who know do, and those who don't teach. Uh, so I'm a doer. I work full time inside a company, a NASDAQ listed company called Proficient, uh, and we use Agile in all of our project delivery. So that's one thing that I enjoy, being a doer. And so whenever I conduct training, uh, I don't conduct that training as a professional trainer. Uh, I conduct that training out of a passion, a desire to share uh, about Agile uh, with others because in my experience, both in my current company, but in my past several companies, uh, we are very successful using this approach. Uh, and I'm passionate about helping other people to live long and prosper. I hope that when uh, you're my age, some of you already are, and obviously you might have learned about Scrum earlier than me because I see a lot of black hair out there. Yeah, but uh, for those of you who might be younger than me uh, and on your road to gray hair, uh, I hope to share ways to help you solve that problem. Uh, the other thing that I'm very proud of uh, is despite our focus on agility within my organization, uh, we have also been uh, assessed at the highest level of maturity, uh, level five, by the uh, CMMI, the Capability Maturity Model Integrated. We're one of about only a, a handful, perhaps 10 companies in the world uh, that are assessed at CMMI level five using an agile approach. So that might be a couple of reasons that it might be worth listening to. Uh, so I really want to uh, ask, where might you not use Scrum? Anybody have any ideas about where Scrum might not fit? Okay. Uh, there are a couple of places that I think Scrum is not the right fit. Yeah. So if I were going to build an office building, if I were going to build an office building, I wouldn't use Scrum. Uh, I would probably do a whole lot of uh, designing, and I would probably do a whole lot of planning. Of course, the designs and plans will be wrong. No question about that. Pretty messed up project still applies. Uh, the schedule will be delayed, uh, and the cost will probably be overrun. Of course, I'm sure none of you have any experience with that. Uh, but actually, using Scrum to build a building would not manifest any significant benefit of Scrum. And in fact, I suspect that it, it might manifest, uh, compared to the traditional approach, uh, some weaknesses. Uh, but we're not always trying to build office buildings. We're often trying to do other things. For some companies, they're trying to survive. Imagine that you were dropped into Antarctica. Yeah. If you were dropped into Antarctica, you probably wouldn't be concerned about an office building and all of the time and effort it would take to build an office building. Yeah. You might be interested in something like this that would keep you from freezing to death uh, overnight. Yeah, if I were going to, uh, if I were dropped into Antarctica, I would certainly be thinking about building an igloo. And an igloo perhaps this big, especially for me, one person, who probably doesn't know very much about building an igloo. Yeah. I wouldn't try to build that all at once. I would probably try to dig a hole in the snow that would be, uh, I don't know, two, three feet deep uh, and try to build a little uh, cover over that. Uh, often whenever we look at igloos, uh, we'll see that the door of the igloo is much longer than the one pictured here. Uh, that would probably be kind of the first thing I would build. I would want to be out of the wind at night uh, and if it snowed again, I wouldn't want that snow to be on me. I would like it to be on the top of this small igloo I would build. Yeah, but if I were going to be there over a long time, 
I'd probably want to add a little bit to my in loop. I might start by hollowing out another area that would be much larger uh, and probably putting something where I could have a fire in the middle of that. Uh, so that I could keep warm uh, a bit around the fire. Uh, probably wouldn't want that in my small area because it would probably cause it to melt and collapse on me. And I'm not really interested in dying. And then I'd probably start building up walls, ring by ring, day by day, uh, during the time that I'm not out trying to catch rabbits to eat to stay alive. Uh, the last thing I think that would be in my mind would be trying to build a, a large office building where I know that I can deliver this uh, sometime in the future without great date risk uh, and without great peril uh, to my life and limb. So yeah, there are places where I think agility is extremely important and there are places where agility may not be so important. Live or die? I will select this Agile approach. If I were going to build a whole, whole bunch of cars, yeah, this is kind of a, an interesting area because there are indeed people who are using Scrum uh, to build cars. Uh, if you're interested in learning more about that, you can go out and look at something called Wikispeed. If you Google for Wikispeed, there's a story uh, about some people who are using uh, self-organizing, cross-functional, uh, distributed teams uh, to build uh, a car. But the car they're building is a little bit different than what we're talking about here. Uh, what we're talking about here is mass manufacturing. And if we were thinking about mass manufacturing, in fact, Scrum doesn't provide a lot of value in mass manufacturing. Uh, there's a part to manufacturing where Agile approaches, and Scrum does apply very effectively. And it's a part of manufacturing that we often don't think so much about. Uh, we kind of generally end up seeing uh, the end product. Uh, what process do you think uh, is applied, however, before we get into manufacturing? Have you ever heard of somebody following a strict or a rigorous process in terms of their creative design. Yeah. We actually don't have very good insight into many creative shops. Uh, but in fact, one of the things that we'll find, they usually don't follow what we would call a, a standardized process. There's not necessarily a lot of definition around their process. And yet what we will discover is that their process is very, very agile. They do a lot of things that are iterative. Uh, as an example of that, uh, hopefully this uh, video shows uh, for everyone. Do you know what this is? Uh, these are the uh, F-1 uh, rockets uh, that are attached to the uh, Saturn V uh, launch vehicle. And uh, a really interesting thing uh, about these I found this uh, article uh, a while back. I'm gonna show you a text slide. I don't like text very much, but I think here uh, a, a text slide might be interesting. Let me see if I can find that text slide. It will be a little bit different format. So here's a, a blurb out of, yeah, out of something that I found. Uh, each F-1 rocket was uniquely built by hand and had its own idiosyncrasies, right? But the design process used here in the 1960s uh, was necessarily iterative. To be able to build this, uh, they had to build something, right? Kind of come up with a concept, uh, design it, fabricate it, uh, stick it into a test harness, test it. Maybe it worked, and then they'd move forward. Maybe it didn't. And so they would have to do something that in Scrum we would call uh, inspecting uh, and adapting. They would have to uh, perhaps go back and make some minor modifications to the design, uh, refabricate, rebuild, retest, yeah, over and over, that iterative approach. Uh, so sometimes people say, oh, it's not rocket science. Yes, it is. And Scrum is very good at rocket science. 
if we're doing things that require this kind of creativity, even if those things are, are mission critical, life critical, uh, this iterative and incremental approach provide us with a foundation to succeed uh, in some very difficult scenarios. Uh, some other places that Scrum really applies very well uh, that perhaps other approaches won't satisfy. I know I want to go somewhere, I just don't know where I want to go. How do I plan my way out of a situation like that? Uh, we have a saying that is called uh, paralysis by analysis. I spend all of my time trying to figure out, analyze, to come to a conclusion uh, about what I want. And in all of that time that I'm thinking and researching and maybe analyzing and designing, uh, maybe I continue doing that on and on. I can never set uh, my mind straight about what it is exactly that I want to do. And so, consequently, I, I kind of uh, do a lot of nothing in terms of getting a result. I can't really necessarily plan my way out of that situation. I don't know exactly where I want to go yet. Uh, what's my path forward? Yeah. So Agile provides an interesting path around that. Uh, I see Agile as something that is growing uh, well beyond where it started. Uh, if we look back at classical Agile, that would be affiliated and associated primarily with the software development industry. Uh, but increasingly, it's growing outside of that. As I mentioned, there are now uh, some creative shops uh, that are using Scrum and Agile uh, in a, a very direct sense. There is uh, something that I've talked about a couple of times uh, here in Malaysia that is called the Lean Startup. Uh, Lean Startup focuses specifically on helping organizations uh, move forward uh, in, their, in their business thinking. And a very interesting thing happens with many, many businesses, and that is uh, they think they know what they want to do, uh, but whenever they actually do what they think they want to do, uh, it ends up not resonating at all with the, the consumer base or the, the clientele that they are structuring. Uh, a surprising number. Uh, more than 90% of companies end up doing something that's different than what they set out to do if they are successful. Uh, in the Lean Startup, there's this idea of pivoting that if you come to an impasse, uh, you can think about changing, pivoting your direction, uh, and changing and going another direction. Yeah, That's something that if you plan for, yeah, you might not be able to do. Uh, you have to be able to respond. Uh, and that's an important thing about Agile. So if I don't know where I want to go, yeah, Agile is a great way to help me get somewhere and somewhere valuable. Uh, I do that by doing something. I'm not going to analyze forever. I'm going to do something. Because the only way we'll know whether or not we're doing something that is right or wrong is to get feedback. And the only way to get feedback is to give our customers something. Uh, analysis doesn't give us anything. Customers don't pay for analysis documents. They don't pay for design documents. Yeah, I know, you can sign contracts that say those things. But those aren't the real customers. At the end of the day, somebody wants to use our product, or not. It would be much nicer to know that they don't want to use our product soon so we can pivot, so we can change our direction uh, and find something that they actually do want. Yeah, sometimes we actually know what we want, but we don't know how to get there. Yeah. All roads lead to Rome, as the old saying goes. Uh, yeah, but if we don't know how to get there, uh, we know where we want to go, don't know how to get there, Agile, again, provides us with a fantastic platform. 
It allows us to move and inspect and adapt. We're agile all the time. We may not label it as such. Uh, but as we're uh, leaving our office in the evening and getting ready to drive home, yeah, uh, we might use uh, our, our iDevice, Waze, to see whether or not the road that we usually take is uh, jammed or not. Yeah. My friend DK always complains about the jams here. Oh man, Vernon, it's very jammed. And I look over and like the speedometer is like 20 kilometers an hour. And I said, DK, hey, this is not a jam. In China, this is like smooth traffic flow. <laughs> I'm very happy to be moving 20 kilometers an hour. Yeah. So the idea of jam is a little bit different. Uh, but we inspect and we adapt all the time. It's part of our life. So thinking that you have a, a, a goal is great. Having a plan to get to that goal, also great. But sometimes plans have to change. Yeah, the, the story I always share in training is I get finished with a long day of work. Uh, I have a plan to go home. I'm American, yeah. I live in China, but I'm an American. Americans like to go home and uh, drink beer and watch TV. Yeah, that's the American thing to do. Yeah. I don't drink beer, I do watch some TV. But let's say I'm the prototypical American. I wanna go home, I wanna kick my shoes off, I wanna sit back in my lazy chair, I want to drink some beer and watch the TV. That's my plan. And as I'm driving home, I get this phone call uh, from my wife, and my wife says, hey Vernon, I want you to come over here to the department store and look at some beautiful shoes with me. And uh, I will buy you Starbucks. <laughs> Is my best plan to go home. Yeah. We're agile in our life. Things change and we need to inspect and adapt around those. And agile provides us with the platform to do that. Uh, there are a lot of ways to get home. And sometimes they mean we pass through the department store and buy shoes for our wife. Uh, this might be a little bit more interesting to some people uh, because I think often there's a perception that, oh, Agile, yeah, if we're accepting changes all the time, and we've all heard of scope creep, right? Yeah, Agile doesn't really have this concept of scope creep. We embrace changes. We let changes to be introduced into what we may deliver any time. So oftentimes people think, oh yeah, how can I be sure that I can deliver something on a certain date? We're actually very poor at doing that using traditional approaches. Uh, one of the differences is, I can say, I strongly believe that Agile is the right answer here 100% of the time. The reason that it's the right answer 100% of the time is if I follow a staged development process, a lot of things that happen inside the process become opaque. We cannot see what's happening. Uh, often in the past, whenever we've done large projects, we'll have different teams, perhaps different teams in different locations, all working on their part, their component, their module. Uh, and everybody is doing great, and then we get to the end, and everything needs to be integrated together. And even though they knew that before, you can't really integrate until things are done, right? Development has to be done before we can integrate all these pieces together. And we probably had a great document that said how these things were going to integrate together, but what happens? We try to integrate and Part A doesn't fit into part B. And this was probably unexpected. We probably worked right close to the deadline for delivery, and things don't integrate. And so now we have the uh, end of project uh, yeah, frenzy. People coming in very early, staying late, perhaps staying all night, perhaps staying all night for two or three days. Yeah, I'm sure you have no experience with that. Uh, and 
finally, perhaps through a lot of intensive work towards the end, we finally get things to work together, and then we start testing. And what do we find? Bugs. Yeah. Bugs, you know where they come from? Testers put bugs in the code. Yeah. I know that's true, because if you come over and look at it on my computer, it's fine. Yeah, you did something. But the net result is we end up not being able to meet this date. We end up not being able to meet this target. I've never missed a date on an Agile project. I always deliver something. And I deliver it on time. And it's integrated. And it's tested. And it works. I'm never afraid of committing to delivering something on a date. Something. Is that everything you want? That I can't guarantee. <laughs> but the reality is, you want everything. Can I give you everything by a fixed date? Probably not. But you know what? I can give you, especially if you participate with me as a collaborator, the most value that we could accomplish by that date. Some things left behind. We didn't get those done. But if you've collaborated with me effectively, the things that are left undone are the things that have less value. Are those things going to keep us from launching? It's possible. But it's unlikely. The other thing that I can guarantee is, if I'm not going to be able to deliver everything to you on that date, you'll know pretty early. You don't want to know after two weeks that the, everything you want can't be delivered on time. I'm sure that most people, if they say, oh, uh, two weeks into a, a one-year project, they go into their boss's office and say, oh, boss, there's no way we can deliver on time. Yeah, how do you think that conversation would go? Nobody dares go to their boss after only two weeks and say, oh, we can't deliver on time. Yeah, but in the Agile approach, uh, we're kind of naked. We have nowhere to hide. All of the ugliness is visible. I committed to delivering some amount of work in two weeks. If I didn't deliver that, yeah, we're late, behind schedule. Are we going to catch up? Oh, sure. Yeah. About the same time that it starts raining hamburgers, we can assume anything. Yeah. Agile is uh, interesting about assumptions. We can't avoid assumptions. But the approach to agility is validate those assumptions as quickly as possible uh, and face reality. Knowing two weeks into a one-year project that you're going to be delayed is really, really much better in most cases than knowing two weeks before the project is supposed to be delivered that you're going to be delayed. And so that's something that Agile also helps us guarantee. Uh, finally, oh, we all like that, right? But in some cases, we don't have very much of it. I don't have very much of it. So if I don't have a lot of this to waste, yeah, Agile is the only way to go. One of the interesting things that's coming out of this idea of lean startups, uh, some of the most agile companies in the world, they are only giving any project 20% of its planned budget to fail or to succeed. Only 20% of its budget. Why is that? Now there's this concept called the 80-20 principle, the, eight, uh, the Pareto principle. It says that with about 20% of our effort, we can achieve about 80% of the effect. So if I invest 20% of the effort, and I get 80% of a product done, and I actually send it out to market, two very valuable things happen. One is, I get to see whether or not I was right or wrong about the real market value of this product. 
A few years ago, I was doing a certified Scrum Master class with a bunch of people from Hewlett Packard. And on one morning, I came in and I told them, congratulations! And many of them had, it was a weekend. I usually do classes on the weekend because I, I have a real job as well. Uh, and so they, early on the weekend, they hadn't read the news yet. And they said, so why are you congratulating us? What happened? I said, HP canceled the touchpad. And they said, why would you congratulate us about that? I said, it's really a very agile move. I can see you're starting to manifest your agility. It was a bold decision to decide to not throw more money, right? To waste more money after a market that their product had already validated. They had no real mind share or market share around. They could have continued spending more and more and more. They made a very bold, agile decision to stop. Fast failure before you've burnt through millions, billions of dollars is really a viable alternative. Uh, the other thing that can happen is uh, things go the other way. Sometimes we underestimate value. We won't know the value until it's actually in the marketplace in some form. But if we've underestimated and this goes out into the marketplace, or even if we've estimated accurately, we get this 80% product out there and customers buy it. And now what do we have? We have this really uh, interesting business tool called revenue. And we can use that revenue then to continue the propagation and the building of our product, perhaps indefinitely. So this idea of delivering things in small increments of shippable functionality is an incredibly powerful business tool. Uh, it gives us capabilities uh, that a simple, traditional waterfall approach simply cannot match. Uh, I always talk to people, there, there's a lot of misconceptions about Scrum. Uh, I always tell people that if you're doing Scrum right, you are achieving what I think is the apex of what we can do with the models that we know now. And that is to achieve the highest business value in the shortest time. If that's what you want to do, yeah. Scrum is probably your tool. So I thank you all for your time. Uh, I look forward to your questions during the panel. Uh, and I hope you enjoy uh, the rest of the day here. And uh, hope to get to talk to some of you more. Thank you.